Welcome back. I gotta show you something. And that brings us to channel number nine, which I'm actually going to let my friend Martin tell you about. This year I picked up a new skill, which is pixel art. I've been interested in pixel art for a long time since I was a kid, but I never really took it seriously. And Why this not? year I finally decided that I wanted to start taking it seriously, but I ran into some problem points hmm. and I found Pixel Pete's YouTube hey, channel to yeah. be particularly helpful there. Especially a video. So I got a shout out in one of Thomas Frank's videos. He's got nearly 2 million subscribers. Thank you. So the crazy thing that happened is on January 1st, because of that, I got 785 subscribers in one day. What a way to start the new year. Welcome new subscribers. I know you're here for pixel art, but that's not going to be this video. Don't worry, I'm going to keep making pixel art videos. So a new version of GB Studio came out and it's got some pretty cool features. I'll show you guys how to do these things and let's get started. So I'll start with an easy one. Go to view, settings, and here, check this checkbox that says use custom color palette. And here we'll be able to make custom color palettes. So the easiest way to do that is to just open up a program or find a site online that gives you the hex color. So for example, let's say we want um, blue. We grab this hex uh, color right up here. And then we can just paste that in right here. I'm gonna hit uh, and um, boom, see, it gave us the, the blue. So that's how you can um, swap colors. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you can also do this, but it'll take you much longer um, to get the colors that you want if you're just altering the red, green, blue hues. I'm just randomizing it here so we can see it. We can see it in action. That is a hideous color. All right, let's see what that. Uh, let's see what our game looks like. I did, I, oh my god. I didn't pick the best colors, but you get the point. All right, so there's a really cool new feature called custom events. If you click between a scene, this is where you can see the custom events menu. By the way, if you drag this out, it'll create two columns. I thought that was kind of neat. So what a custom event is, is basically pre-made code, so you don't have to copy paste a whole bunch of stuff. Let's go ahead and create one. So I'm gonna create a shopkeeper. Um, custom event, you know, just sells stuff. And what I'm going to do here is show you um, a, a new event that was added called uh, menu. You can search menu and text display menu. Now you can display a menu in the dialog. I'm going to give this four options. And um, you can also drag this out, but I actually kind of like it like this. Um, four options, The uh, make sure you change the layout to um, menu instead of dialogue if you want to have that new menu look. You'll see what it looks like in a second. And then um, we're just going to sell stuff, right? So maybe um, nuts, grass, a leaf, and a, uh, and a kiss. If I click off, now you can see here it is. You can always go up here and delete the custom event if you want, um, but um, I think this one's fine. But it won't really do anything until we um, until we put this event on something. So I added um, a new actor here, this uh, little squirrel. Let's call him Shopkeeper. And I'm going to add an event here. Now the custom event is searchable. So if I search um, shop, remember I called it Shopkeeper? Here's my event right here, Shopkeeper. And now that code that I created, the custom event, is right here on the shopkeeper. So let's go ahead and uh, see if this worked. So I go up to the squirrel and check it out. There's, there's a menu here where I can make selections. There's no logic in here yet, so it just closes the menu when you make a selection. But um, you can make it do all sorts of stuff. Pretty snazzy, huh? So if you got a sharp eye, you might have noticed that also there's two tabs here now. Pfft. One's on interact and one's on init. So on init, um, init stands for initialization. And so when the scene first loads, that's when the actor's initialized. So what we can do is we can have this um, shopkeeper here get uh, um, angry for no reason. Here we go, scene loaded up. And if you saw the shopkeeper got angry, and now if we want that to happen again, all we have to do is reload the scene. So as you can see, the shopkeeper got angry. And it doesn't matter which way I go, um, you can go down here, whatever. But every time that the scene reloads, 
the actors it reinitialized and it triggers that on init. Okay, so now I'm gonna rename this shopkeeper to to quest guy, and I'm going to remove the um, you know the shopkeeper code we had there. And on init, I'm gonna show you um, a nice little new new feature, and that is called bit flags. If you search flag, you'll see a, a whole bunch of new things here. So let's um, let's take a look at how they work. Click variable set flags. So I'm just going to pick a random variable and I'm going to rename this one to quests. Area one quests. And um, basically, as you know, variables can store a number, a number between zero and 255. They can also be used to store true or false, zero and one. Basically, what a bit flag is, is it's like um, a variable that can store eight true or false. So I can click any of these and when I click it, I'm changing it from, um, I think when I click it, it becomes true or when I click it, it becomes false. I'm pretty sure when I click it, it becomes true and by default, all of these are false. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna pretend that the bit flags are quests. You can use bit flags for all sorts of things. You can use it to keep track of um, items, maybe um, recipes, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna say these are quests. So let's say area one has eight quests and I'm just going to check which of these quests are done. You can do these quests out of order. Bit flags are great for when you, when you wanna be able to do things out of order. So let's just say the player completed quest one and the player completed quest four. So I set those bit flags, but now I need to check them, right? So search flag, and then you can check if variable has flag. Okay, so I selected area one quests, and now I can check any of these bit flags, right? So let's say I wanted to check the first one. It's gonna check if it's um, true. So if it's true, I can have the, you know, the text display something like, um, quest one complete. And maybe, maybe if certain quests are done, the character says certain things or certain doors open. If you use this as a recipe and let's say the, each one of these flags represents an ingredient. If you have the correct ingredients, maybe something special happens. It could be also be used for a puzzle. But yeah, so basically, um, the, you know, this is checking the first bit flag here and it's going to say, uh, quest is complete. Um, or else I'm going to say, uh, you know, quest one, um, incomplete. And if I hit play, we can just really quickly see if the bit flags work. So I started it up and as you can see, it says quest one complete. Now, if I go here and I uncheck the flag and I hit play again, it'll probably say quest one incomplete. Now it says quest one incomplete. So there you go. You can use flags to keep track of um, an inventory, items, recipes, quests, all sorts of stuff. Another really nice um, feature is when you do a text display now, there's a little add avatar button. So let's just make um, my quest guy say hello and and I'll just make the avatar uh, the cat and I'm going to change the squirrel into the cat and check it out now. Okay, so I'm just gonna go talk to the cat and check it out. There's a little a little portrait there in the bottom left for it. Isn't that cute? Okay, so let me show you another cool event that's been added. So if you search timer, there's a bunch of new timer events. So um, click this one, set timer. And let's make this uh, two seconds. So every two seconds, what we're going to do is um, we're going to have um, the quest guy, um, which is our cat, get shocked. But this will repeat forever. So <laughs> if you want, if you want it to stop, what you need to do is maybe have a variable where you count, and then eventually, once you want it to stop. If you search um, timer, there's also a disable timer script. And here it'll disable the timer. Then if you want to, you can also re-enable the timer 
um, by using the restart timer script. So that way you can have you can have things going on in the scene, like repeating. Maybe um, something keeps shooting a fireball or um, a character walks in a certain way. But once you do something, like you pull a lever or whatever, once you interact with something, you can stop that timer. And then maybe once you do something else, you can restart the timer. So you could create some pretty interesting puzzles using timers. It's actually not a bad idea for another video. Okay, so let me show you one last super powerful thing. I'm going to just add a variable here. Yeah, there. And I'm going to set this to, um, let's say, um, 3. So let's say my character is level 3. But let's say I go up to a quest giver, or um, and the quest giver has to give me the quest that's equal to my level, or something like that, right? There's this new thing called switch. And this is in every programming language and it's called a switch statement. And what a switch does is it lets you have different results for different values. So over here, we're going to go back to level, which is uh, 27, let's find it there, 27. So for number of options, this number is how many different things you want to happen. So let's say um, the, uh, I make this um, three. That'll give me three different results, right? So one is if I'm level one, two is if I'm level two, three is if I'm level three. And this thing can actually go, you know, much, 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 much higher. Um, just for the sake of giving you an example, I'll, I'll make it five. Okay, so what I did here, let's, let's run through this. Here, um, just for the sake of the code working, I'm setting the level here to three, like my character level is three. And then this switch statement, it'll check that variable. And if, there, there's five options here, and if that variable is equal to one, it'll show this. If that uh, value is equal to two, it'll show this, three, it'll show this. So basically you can have a character and every time you come back to the character and you're a different level, the character can say different things. So you can have one quest giver. And when you're level one, he'll give you quest one. When you're level two, he'll give you quest two. Um, pretty cool. You can use switch statements for all sorts of other stuff as well. I accidentally changed that to zero. I wonder if any of you caught that. Oh, so something you should know for switch statements. If the value doesn't match with any of these, then it'll go to the else. So for example, you know, if we were to display text here, this would say, um, didn't find a match, you know, so, something like that. Um, so you, you want to make sure that you do put something in the else just so that um, there's always a result. I hope that inspired you to do some cool things in your game. In the description, there's a link to my itch where you can download the project and all the art. If you like pixel art, follow me on Twitter. I'm moving to Austin, so there might not be a new video this weekend, but I can't wait to show you my new office. It's gonna be. Subscribe, please. Please subscribe.